Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. And happy birthday to me. Burr, 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 burr. Happy birthday, Savannah. Yay. Yay. I see every year we say, oh my gosh, I'm so old. But like, I don't want to say that because I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm not really that old. But Personally, really? I would feel like this year is the real year that we could classify you as old because now you have to pay for your own insurance. I mean, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Which really, truly, in my brain and eyes, that means, like, fully you're an adult. Like, when you have to pay for your own insurance and you can't, like, live off your parents anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. It is depressing. That's, like, the only bad thing, though. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the aches. And the pains. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also not kidding. <laughs> but, um, yeah. no, you're not that. We're still young spries. In the mm-hmm, grand mm-hmm. scheme of things. But I just think it's fun calling you old, so you're always going to be the grandma to me. Sorry. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's true. I'm almost a whole year older than you, yeah. so. It's facts. <laughs> you know. <sighs> um, Funny. I, I'm excited for my birthday a little bit because, like, I think it's going to be just, like, a chill day for the mm-hmm. most part. Okay, Taylor. I love that. Remember you said you were going to take me to go see my policeman? Yeah, I remember that. What happened to that? We're going. Are you coming here? Yep. When? That weekend. And we're okay. going to see My Policeman. And if you don't know, My Policeman is a movie featuring Harry Styles. So, as mm-hmm. you all should know, we're going to be the first to see that movie. I still have not seen Don't Worry Darling. <sighs> is that still in theater? It definitely is. And that's a crime, because it's should, actually a really good movie. Should we see both? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm down. Double feature. <laughs> I have, in fact, already seen Don't Worry Darling. But I would love to go back and watch it knowing what I know. Okay, yeah, I, I see that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, okay. why not? Double well, feature, guys, for Savannah's birthday. We'll see, we'll see <laughs> <laughs> if we have it in us, but, um, yeah. Uh, other than that, though, like, I think I'm going to um, go, we're going out to eat. I told Garrett to pick a restaurant, like, randomly. Oh. Well, I mean, not totally randomly. I gave him some choices okay and... good because garrett would totally be the one to be like okay we're going to mcdonald's or he <laughs> or he'd probably like blindfold you and be like just sit in the car and then you pull up to mcdonald's right right um but no like he's gonna keep it a total secret and um yeah is the only thing about that is he has to i mean because then you're gonna know where you're going but like i don't know where I don't know how to get anywhere. <laughs> so. Okay, that's very true. I definitely couldn't get to anywhere either. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I gonna say about it? Oh, I can't. I can't like look at the menu beforehand and See, like that's decide the, what I want. That sucks. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I, mean, I kinda, you can look at it there. Yeah, but I like surprises because it's like that's like another gift almost. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Garrett, if you're listening, you better pick somewhere good. And I know mm-hmm. that he's not listening, but you know he. He said he already picked, and the oh. way he picked was he had a list of restaurants that, like, we've been to before or that he wanted to go to, um, and then he did, like, a random number generator. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's the best way to go. So he didn't even really pick, like, he kind of picked, but... <laughs> that's really funny. I'm going to ask him where y'all are going so that I can know, and then you can't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really funny. That'll yeah. be really fun. A fun birthday. Yeah. So, so everybody wish Savannah a happy birthday. Yes. Because it's her birthday. And <laughs> yeah. you have to. It's the rules. <laughs> yeah. Comment right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So otherwise, other other than just my birthday, um, I wanted to talk about early voting. So <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the U.S., um, you know, everybody who's listening from other countries, I guess you don't need to listen to this part. But, you know, voting is coming up and i believe the dates are october 20th to november 5th for early voting and then you know the official day is always november 8th Mm -hmm. as always um so i just want to urge everyone to go out and vote because it's just you gotta vote crazy i'm so sorry you (laughs) have to vote like if you can please go like there's so many times you can go just do some research and go Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm and usually it's, like, right, it's, like, really close to you. Like, the polling place that I have, um, I can walk to it, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if I could, I could walk to mine, but I might get hit. Because oh, I have to yeah. cross a severe, severe road. Um, yeah. But I could. It's very close to my house, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
definitely definitely go if you're mm-hmm. able to because yeah. it's really important especially this year so please go vote um, yeah so with that yeah. um shall we get into the stories uh yes let's do it so so i'm i'm pretty excited to talk about what i have to say today Ooh, <laughs> i'm excited so i've talked about this before um speaking of a double feature you've talked about yeah, it before I mean, that's okay. true that's true i didn't actually look up the other episode number i should have <laughs> fake um <laughs> but this is going to be about vampires <gasps> Of course, of course. I'm glad that this would be your birthday episode, honestly. Honestly, I didn't even really think about that. (laughs) It fits so well. But I'm glad, too, because vampires, you know, definitely one of my favorite creatures. 100%. I'm not even convinced fully that you're not a vampire, Savannah. (laughs) You love them a little too much, (laughs) in my opinion. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, we'll see if I really age or not. (laughs) I guess we will. Um... Okay, so I've talked about vampires before, but um, I mainly focused on vampires that were in New Orleans, and there were some that were in France that I talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, And then this time, I wanted to get more into where, like, where the stories came from in, like, other parts of the world, Mm -hmm. um, and, like, some of the literature that shaped um, sort of the, the stereotypes and stuff that we have today about vampires like dracula um and this other one called the vampire um yeah so th- there's like a lot out there about vampires so i might even do a part three one day Ooh. which which could be fun very fun um okay so the earliest record of the word vampire dates back to 1688 so these have been around for a good while yeah a um, long time and You know, this is across many cultures. I think the word vampire, like, comes from a different language, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's just turned into it over time. Um, But even pre-vampire, there were, like, creatures, um, like, demons and the devil and other other things of that sort that drank blood in legends. Mm -hmm. So that has just been around for... A long time, which is kind of crazy, which makes it makes you think, are are they real? Makes me believe it more. That's for sure. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So in folklore, vampires are basically zombies, actually. What? Yeah. What does that mean? (laughs) Yeah. Like, I didn't really realize that before. Um, No, I definitely didn't realize that before. Yeah. Because, you know, like they say, like, the zombies are like the undead or whatever. And then. Mm -hmm vampires are like people who live forever yeah i mean if you think about it though they are undead no they are you're right they are yeah no that's so true but you like you know we like separate zombies from vampires but they're no you're right that's basically the same thing that's so crazy yeah um yeah because basically they're animated corpses which sounds oh. <laughs> bad to say Ew. but um uh so people would like bury their dead and then they would come back to life as a vampire oh is, is what the story is okay maybe i have heard that before actually mm-hmm. um and for the most part people believed that the corpses of like evil beings um so like i guess they would be possessed the body would be possessed and then come out as a vampire. Oh. Um, or also, this is kind of bad, suicide victims. Mm-hmm. They were likely to become vampires for some reason. Oh. Um, or witches. Of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> obviously witches. Um, and they can also be like evil spirits possessing a corpse. Um, Hate that. Yeah. Or they can be somebody who was bitten by a vampire. So, like, you don't have to die to become one. Yeah. <laughs> you can just be bitten by one. Which we've all heard of that. Of course, yes. Um, and there were some ways that people tried to prevent vampires. Um, so, since they started with, like, you know, corpses, <laughs> um, people would bury their dead upside down. Oh. 
Why? Yeah. What, what is that going to do? I mean, if you're face down, maybe it's harder to get out. <laughs> See, the first thing I imagine is, like, they also say, like, vampires can turn into, like, bats, and bats sleep upside down. So I'm like, you're just putting them the way they want to be. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I'm sure they had some kind of reasoning behind why they did that. Like, their no, head really is deeper think... in the ground, so it's harder to get to. Maybe. I don't know. I just think, like, imagine laying in... <laughs> Imagine laying in a coffin. Um, <laughs> and it's probably easier to get out if you're on your back because you can kick it open, right? Well, that's for sure. Yeah. But then if definitely. you're on, if you're like face down, you'd have to flip over and then do it. But it's like, you know, it's Still, a lot of effort. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> no, yeah. Probably harder. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's what I think, but maybe not. Um Another way was to place, um, like, sickles or scythes near the grave, um, which would, they say that it would appease the dead, so then they wouldn't want to get up from their grave. Interesting. Which, I don't really understand that. No, I don't understand that one at all. Mm -hmm. See, I was expecting you to be like, when they come up out of the grave, we're going to slice their heads off or something crazy like that. Yeah. See, maybe it's like they see those and they're like, oh, I don't want to get up because yeah, I like, will get I'm scared. Cut, cut yeah. Up. Yeah. I don't know. Um, another way to prevent them from coming up would be to um, sever the tendons at the knees. Oh, my God. That is so disgusting. <laughs> that is just disgusting. Yeah. I mean, that would that would definitely prevent them from getting up. <laughs> That's... You can't, Sand. Yep. <laughs> You're right about that one. Um, yeah. Uh, another way would be to place poppy seeds or sand on the ground uh, by the grave, which would keep the vi the vampire occupied by um, counting all the grains. Oh, you know, we've heard this one before. Uh-huh. Yeah, we have. That's interesting, though. Yeah. I, um... I still don't understand that, though. It's like, why would you want to... Why do they want to stand there and count them all? Yeah, I, I don't understand it either. Maybe they like, just have, like, I don't know, some sort of something. I don't, they just, like, feel the need. To, I don't know. Like, are they dead? Maybe they're just stupid. Like, <laughs> maybe, like maybe. oh, we have to count these seeds. Can't, yeah. can't go anywhere without counting these seeds, man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there is a word for it. I did not write it down. But there's, like, a word for it where... It, you just have the need to count things, so. Okay, well, that makes sense. But, like, I just don't understand why they have it. No, me neither. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know, supposedly that helps keep them away because they, they get occupied. Um, some other ways to just, like, keep them away. Um, garlic, of course. Of course. That's the Which, one I feel like we all know. Yeah, see, I didn't really come up with a reason for that one either. It's just they just don't garlic. want their breaths to smell yeah, bad. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, a branch of wild rose and hawthorn is said to harm vampires. Mm -hmm. um, you can sprinkle mustard seed on the roof of your house to keep them away. Oh, okay. <laughs> which I don't, I don't really get that one either. But okay. Um, sacred items will keep them away, such as a crucifix, a rosary, or holy water. Okay. Um, and it is also said that they cannot walk on consecrated ground, which is, like, a church or temple, um, and they can't cross running water. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm, I never, I don't think I ever heard about the running water one. Yeah, I feel like I have heard that before, but I just, I don't get where that came from. Yeah, I mean, maybe I have heard of it, but why? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I need the why to so many of these things. But honestly, it's just what it is. They just don't like garlic, and they don't like running water. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, there are a few stories that have sort of shaped the way we know vampires today. So, like, all of what I just said were sort of the... um. The legends that came before these stories I'm about to talk about. And then mm -hmm. these stories sort of added to it. And they were just really influential on how vampires are perceived. Okay. Um, so, and, and 
that's of course up until twilight but that's like another thing yeah <laughs> of course of course we're um, gonna get to um twilight well th- twilight's honestly for another day but <laughs> <laughs> we'll right. talk about it for like a second at the end um so the first real vampire in literature is from the vampire and this is vampire with a y instead of a i okay for some reason <laughs> you know um, i think they just like to spell things with y's back in the day yeah honestly i feel like that yeah <laughs> yeah it, it does look cooler it definitely <laughs> does you're right about that mm-hmm. um and this was jo- by john william um pildori in 1819 mm, pretty long time ago um Oh, sorry. I said that name wrong. Polidori. Polidori. Something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So anyways, this story was actually taken from a story told by Lord Byron. And uh, Lord Byron, the author of this story, John, um, Mary Shelley and Percy Shelley, they had a writing competition, um, just like friendly between them. And the this story that I'm about to talk about, the vampire, was taken from Lord Byron's story that he submitted. Oh. So it's like a copycat, I guess. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but in this um, little competition, um, Mary Shelley actually wrote Frankenstein for it. Mm-hmm. So. I knew I you were going to say mention- that. Yeah. I knew. <laughs> but. Yeah. Of course, we had to mention. Mm-hmm. That's a good book. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. It's like this story. I mean, this contest, I don't know if they like wanted to submit stories about monsters, but like. Right. If that wasn't the memo, then everybody was just on the same page. Yeah, exactly. And they they came up with like some um, very influential pieces. Yeah, they did. Yeah, (laughs) they did. Yeah. So the so Frankenstein's for another day, but um. I'm going to sort of go through the plot of the story, The Vampire. So, basically, <clears throat> there's this main character named Aubrey. And while I was reading through this, I thought that Aubrey was a woman for the longest time. But no, Aubrey is a man. <laughs> well, you know, that is one of the names that's used, like, interchangeably. But I always see it as a woman, too. Yeah. So, yeah, just know that as I as I go through this. But Aubrey um, meets this man, Lord Ruthven, at a party in London, and they talk to each other, and Aubrey agrees to go traveling with him around Europe. Just, you know, Typical, randomly, as, as you do, as <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, they end up, uh, they get to Rome, and Lord Ruthven had seduced the daughter of somebody that they both knew so Aubrey's like I'm gonna get out of here um so he leaves them together um and then he travels to Greece alone and falls in love with an innkeeper's daughter named Anth um and then she tells him about vampires oh Mm mm-hmm and soon after, Anth is killed. No. And her throat is torn open. What? That's can't not be a coincidence. Yeah. See, the whole town is like, that's definitely a vampire. Yeah. Right? I would think so. <laughs> um, so Aubrey and um, Ruthven, they, they join back up again and travel together just because what could go wrong? Um, oh, yeah. And they're attacked by bandits. As they're traveling. And Ruthven, he's on his deathbed. What? Yeah, because he got really injured in this in this attack. Um, and he tells Aubrey that he cannot speak of him or his death for a year and a day. What? Yeah, this is like an oath on his deathbed. He's like, don't, don't tell anybody I died or don't say my name for a whole year and one day. Okay. I would be like, very specific, but I guess if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. And actually, Ruthven dies laughing. Okay, well, I mean, that's a good thing, I guess. 
<laughs> I mean, I guess, but it's also creepy. And that's extremely scary. But, like, maybe, you know, he was happy. Like, he was laughing at nothing. He was just laughing mm. because he agreed to the this oath. <laughs> okay, this man's a jokester. <laughs> okay, but also what I'm about to tell you. He, um, Aubrey returns to London and finds Ruthven there. Mm. Yeah, and he's living under a new identity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's a trickster. Yeah, he's a jokester, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, you know, they they talk to each other, and he reminds Aubrey of the oath. Mm-hmm. He's like, you can't say my name. Like, you said you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. And you just, you can't talk about me. Um, and he ends up, uh, Ruthven, he seduces Aubrey's sister. Uh, this man is a savage. Yeah literally and um so aubrey has a nervous breakdown because he's <laughs> yeah. like this man literally just came back to to life i would be losing my mind especially like think about like in these times like whenever yeah. like back then yeah exactly wow. he's like he just came back to life and i can't tell anyone like i, I mean like i would just go Personally, against it like, yeah i'm so hell? sorry everyone would know i would not <laughs> have even even when he died i would be like yo he died Right, right. I can't exactly. keep a secret though, so. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. He recovers from his nervous breakdown. <laughs> and he finds out that his sister is engaged oh, to him. No! Yeah. And they're getting married the day the oath ends. Stop it right now. Yeah. So, he ends up writing a letter to his sister explaining everything. Um, and... In case he can't explain in person, right? Mm-hmm. And, of course, he dies. <sighs> How? <laughs> he's... I'm, I'm pretty sure he's, like, killed. And oh he God. dies before he can say anything in person. And, of course, the letter did not arrive on time. No. Mm-hmm. And they get married. And Ruthven drains the blood from his bride. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> and disappears into the night. Stop it right now. I was really not expecting that. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a vampire if you didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I gathered that. Um, that's great. That's a good story. Yeah, so that's, like, the first real vampire story. And it's, like, it's pretty good, honestly. Okay, so you said that this came from King Byron or something? It, um, Lord Byron, sort of, he told i don't know if he told this exact story or like he sort of came up with the characters and then like this other guy john um polidori he um like published it wow that's crazy so yeah it's just i don't know these people back in the day they were like I th- i'm pretty sure this was during like the um That time when there was, like, a long winter, (laughs) what was it called? (laughs) The Little Ice Age? Yeah. Isn't that, wasn't that a thing? Yeah, it was. Um, I'm pretty sure this was during that, so they were probably just bored and (laughs) writing stories. They were like, let's write the craziest thing we can possibly think of. Literally, exactly. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know, that story, I, I was just reading summaries and stuff, but I need to go back and read the whole thing. Yeah, no, that sounds like something I need to read. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... So, yeah, that, that definitely, like, shaped the way people saw vampires for a while. Um, and then, of course, the most famous vampire, um, besides Edward Cullen, is <laughs> um, Dracula. Oh, Dracula. You know? Honestly, that's most definitely the fam- most famous vampire. But why did I think you were going to say Nosferactu? <gasps> Oh my gosh, I didn't even think of it. See, I told you there's so many vampire things. Yeah, add that one to the third episode list. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely. The, and Honestly, the only reason I thought of that was Spongebob. When they're yes. like, oh, no, it's for Rack, so. That's the only reason I know about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, back to Dracula. Yeah, so I wanted to do this whole thing on Dracula, but then I got stuck in some other stuff. So I was like, I'm going to just make it a variety. Yeah. Um. So... Dracula was written by Bram Stoker in 1897, so after, it was after this story I just talked yeah. about, right? Mm-hmm. It yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so anyways, 
this I'll, I'll get into a little summary of this one because i never even knew about like what dracula was about you know mm-hmm. i don't know if i do either um yeah and uh, apparently it's written like in a different type of way um i mean i didn't go through and read the book because i don't read fast <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wasn't about to just read a whole book. (laughs) But um, apparently it's like there's letters and like memos and stuff written. And you have to like, you know, it's written that way. It's not really like a narrator. Oh, interesting. I don't know if I could even follow something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I think it, it sounds cool. But. I don't know. And apparently there's not really a main character somehow. Hmm. But. This sounds very interesting. And unlike yeah. anything I've ever read before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's get into the little summary. So, Jonathan Harker, he takes a business trip to stay at Count Dracula's castle in Transylvania. Mm-hmm. Um. And he discovers, after a while, that Dracula is a vampire. Dun, dun, dun. And so are the women that are in the castle with him. So I guess there's, there's a few vampires in this castle. And, you know, I guess a, lo- a lot happens, and he ends up barely escaping with his life. Like, oh, he Lord. almost dies in this castle. I'm surprised he didn't, honestly. Yeah. Full of vampires? A mm-hmm. vampire castle? Yeah. Lucky. He made it out. Um, and a small group of townsfolk led by um, a man, Abraham Van Helsing, he, they hunt down Dracula and kill him. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Van Helsing? No. Of course you haven't, but it's a really good movie. <laughs> yeah, see, like, I, I was like, I definitely know the name Van Helsing. <laughs> mm-hmm. A vampire hunter. It's a see, good movie. Yeah. There you go. Um, and so, yeah, that's like the general idea of the story, but some little details of Dracula that have made it into like pop culture with like how we see vampires. Um, Dracula did not have a reflection. Oh. Um, so that sort of started the whole thing where vampires don't have a reflection, which is kind of cool. Mm hmm. Um, and many people say that Dracula was based off of Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. Yeah, and his name, his real name was Vlad Draculaia, oh. which is basically Dracula. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, if you round. Yeah, <laughs> if you round. <laughs> <laughs> round the letters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, I don't know, it's just so cool to me. Like, did he actually see that name and was like, let me just, you know make this real person into a character in my book (laughs) like really maybe or what if Mm -hmm. he was like vlad the impaler is actually a vampire so let me just make it seem like it's not really about him yeah yeah that could be it too i mean i don't know um there's another person people think um dracula could have been based off of which is i think less likely but it would be cool um this woman elizabeth bathory I already immediately love it because she's a woman, but okay. Okay. Also, I feel like I've heard of her before. You might have too. I've definitely Um, heard of her, but I don't really know where. Yeah. So she was a Hungarian noblewoman and also an alleged serial killer. Oh, snap. Yeah. Um, And by alleged, I'm pretty sure like (laughs) it's almost 100% confirmed. She just was not, she was a noblewoman, so she wasn't really like charge for it or anything yeah wow so she probably did this um but her and her servants were accused of torturing and killing hundreds of women Uh, women are supposed to stick by women she's killing other women yeah come on lady i take back what Um, i said yeah honestly yeah um from 1590 to from uh to 1610 oh wow Wow, yeah. and it said that she maybe killed hundreds of people? Yes, because they say that she bathed in the blood of the girls to retain her youth. Oh, listen. I know that sounds crazy, but why do I believe that that's true? 
see that's like I feel like that's a common I mean not common but like that's like a thing I've heard about was, in stories yeah. before you know I wouldn't people even say blood. like it's common today because like people think that like I mean like we're not even we don't have the time to get into it but people think that even like a-list celebrities use blood to like look young hmm. so well I don't know that's a story for another day but yeah. that that theory is definitely still going around today yeah so I mean that that could have been happening but I don't I mean there's no proof to say that she actually was staying young from this or anything but yeah but yeah I'm pretty sure she did that um uh, <laughs> So yeah. that that's very vampire-y, but also like I don't I don't know if she drank the blood though. It just says she bathed yeah, in it. That's true. So. Maybe she just had a good old sip while she was bathing. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. You know, part of a oh my god. Ew. <laughs> it's part of a um ritual or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> um so also what I I've never really thought about this with vampires. But in, in Dracula, there's some anti-Semitism. Ugh. I hate this. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that there is in there, but, like, ugh, why? Yeah. Um, and, like, unfortunately, I think it probably, I mean, it shaped the way people saw vampires for a while because, you know, this was so popular. Um, but anyways, there's, like, associations of anti-semitism in the book because like dracula had the resemblance to fictional jewish people like his long sharp nails are similar to those of um fagin in oliver twist Mm -hmm. and like basically his description conveys the notion that he's a jew and that is bad because he is also conveyed as a villain. Yeah, I mean, people. yeah, a murderer, a murderous monster. So yeah, so that's so, yeah. not good at all. We so then yeah, and then like that. in TV ab- adaptations and like movies and stuff, people you know use the description from the book, and then that further just like takes this idea that you know these characteristics are bad, and that yeah. I don't know. But I feel like it's... I mean, I don't know if it actually... I don't want to fully say that it's less common today. Because, I mean, I'm not really, like... in. I'm I'm not Jewish or anything. So, yeah. like, I don't really see this stuff. But... I don't know. I mean, I want to say that it's, like, less common today to see vampires in that way. Mm-hmm. I think mostly because... Of Twilight, though. Yeah, that's what <laughs> if I, I want to be real. Yeah, like ge- like genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, if you're listening out there, vampires have nothing to do with um Jewish people at all. So <laughs> go ahead and separate that from your mind entirely. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a subconscious thing. You know. Yeah, you're right. Because like, you know, people have these descriptions in their head of of, uh, you know, Jewish characteristics like. Oh, the big nose yeah. and the long... I didn't even know long nails, but I guess that's what some mm-hmm. of these articles I was reading said. No, I've heard that before. And, like, I don't know. And then those are also associated with some vampires. So it's like, yeah. you just make the connection subconsciously mm-hmm. if you know about them. And it's just, I don't know. It, it interests me that that can happen, but it's just, like, awful, too. <laughs> it really is awful. So, so yeah. Um, I didn't really realize that was a thing but i guess it is me neither but i'm glad i'm glad we know now yeah and also i'm glad that you know we're sort of separating from that because i really want to say it's because of twilight because because in those credit to edward cullen just go ahead literally they i mean because they don't use any stereotypical like traits like that yeah so we see them in a different way at least like you know our generation Mm -hmm. yeah it's just the skin of a killer bella yeah, and also they don't paint them as villains either. So there's that too. There's also that. Yeah, they're just in high school, but they're 500 years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. So yes, uh, I think that's pretty much all I had about vampires. But it's just, yeah, that whole 
part about oh wait actually i do have a little bit more oh yay um but it still ties into the anti-semitism mm-hmm. oh not <laughs> um, yay <laughs> yeah just the fact that um vampirism like can be spread from person to person like it's a disease uh-huh. and people of that day were see this this sounds awful they were worried about racial pollution oh my god so it sort of ties into that yeah that's yeah. Ugh, listen that is not a good fun fact that i wanted to hear yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so um so yeah with that with all that <laughs> <laughs> with all that being said <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. I just think it's interesting to see like where all these things that we um, like know about vampires or like any creature, like how it developed over time. No, 100%. and like these ones, like these stories have really, like in Dracula in particular, has really like shaped the way vampires were seen for a long time. Mm-hmm. So it's it's cool. No, so. for real. And then you have to think of like all the like types of media that's out today about mm-hmm. vampires like i feel like every movie that comes out almost is about vampires i <laughs> went and saw a movie i where i had no idea what it was about i'm not gonna say which movie because i don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it <laughs> had no idea it was about vampires and it was absolutely about vampires oh, and i was shook huh. i was shook when they all of a sudden had teeth I was, it was crazy hmm. but then also like the other we watched a Netflix show where there was, like, vampires and, like, vampire hunters. Well, I cannot remember what it's called. Oh. Ugh, no. And then Netflix canceled it, which is just awful because it was such a good show. Hmm. I can't remember what it's called. But somebody will know what I'm talking about out there. Yeah. But, no, <laughs> vampires are crazy. That, honestly, I really do believe they're real. Like, <laughs> I really Yeah, don't. and then, and if they are, like probably most of the stuff we we like say we know about them is fake because it's like made up by yeah, people 100 percent. like if vampires are real we probably we literally know zero percent about them like yeah they so. might drink blood that's about it like, yeah. <laughs> that's about it well that's crazy um i'm gonna go ahead and assume that we're gonna have a part three at some other time so you know i'm excited already mm-hmm. because no yeah we definitely can because yeah. i yeah Vampires are cool. So. We love vampires. Also, just any excuse to talk about Edward Cullen and Twilight is, you know, great. Yeah, obviously. Obviously, of course. Um, well, moving on from vampires, I suppose. Um, I have, honestly, I don't even know how to categorize this. It's just a crazy story, man. So why don't we just okay. go ahead and get on into it? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am covering the legend of Turnbull Canyon. Da, da, da. Okay. Okay. So let's just dive right on in. Um, Turnbull Canyon is a four mile loop trail in Whittier, California, which is like in Southern California. Um, and it's part of the Puente Hills Preserve. So, you know, if, if y'all are from California, you know, there you go. Okay. Um, but okay. So Turnbull Canyon has long been rumored to be home of occult meetings, hauntings, the scene of brutal murders, tragic accidents, and a curse. Oh. So, mm, just about everything that we cover here on this podcast. Yeah, um, honestly, like, that's a long list of <laughs> bad things. Yeah, yeah, and it's never getting better from here. So, um, yeah, so for some reason, this really beautiful, it's really beautiful and very peaceful hiking trail um, that is, like, visited by thousands of people a year like thousands upon thousands of people go hiking here um somehow it's turned into a place with like this huge reputation of evil so legend says that turnbull canyon the canyon itself is cursed um and there are so many things to back that (laughs) back that it is cursed so Mm -hmm. let's just go ahead and get right on in to some of the things that make it cursed um so pretty much the first thing that comes out of Turnbull Canyon is that this land once belonged to Native Americans. Obviously, duh, we're in the United States of America. Um, so yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously it did. Um, and legend says that these Native American spirits um, are very angry about their land being stolen. Um, and honestly, as they should be. And so that we're going to just start off, it's haunted by Native American spirits. 
Um, so okay. that's great. You know, that's already bad. That's honestly all I need to hear that it's haunted. And I, I believe it. Like, it's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, obviously, there was a lot of tension, like, when they were still alive between the white colonizers and the indigenous people of the canyon. And it is actually said that the indigenous people were put to death by the colonizers um, by being thrown into the canyon, like, from the top. <gasps> No. Yeah. Okay, see, they have a right to haunt the area then. Yeah. Because that is... No, that's awful. It's so bad. And, but it also doesn't surprise me at all because... No, of course. We, of course not. It doesn't. Because of course they would do that. Mm-hmm. It's just so... It's so awful. Um, And so even... So they didn't obviously kill everybody at once. So while... When it had just begun and people... The colonizers were just taking over, um, the people of the canyon would call it... Um, Hatunga, which means place of darkness and death. So it wasn't actually even called Turnbull Canyon to begin with. It was called Hatunga. Okay. Wow. So literally the place of darkness and death. So that was before that they were, they were killed in this way? It was before they had completely killed all of them that lived there. (laughs) It before, I don't, it wasn't really named before. Like if it was like, we don't really know what it was. But then once they came in, started, you know, killing that's yeah. what it became known as. But it also kind of was known as that a little bit because of being the place of darkness. Because the positioning of this canyon makes it to where when the sun goes down, you can literally not see a single thing. It is pitch black void darkness in the canyon. Uh, that's scary. Which is horrifying. That's scary just as it is. Like, I don't like darkness at all. So, yeah. That's also very scary. Um... So then after, you know, the colonizers come in, there's already, like, disputes in between them and the indigenous people. But there was also disputes between them and the Spanish conquistadors who were all... Everybody was just fighting over who deserved this land, which is just ridiculous. Um, yeah. So there were many fights and ambushes um, on people from the Spanish as well. And... It is said today that all the angry spirits that live in this canyon and are stuck in this canyon try to chase people out of this canyon. Um, huh. Like, they're ghosts. So, um, you know, scary and not good. Are they just trying to, like, be there in peace? And they're like, get out of here. Like, yeah, we they're don't like, want you here. Yeah, they're like, we've literally, like, y'all have taken so much from us. Like, we just want to have our canyon and y'all yeah. need to get out. Exactly. And then we have thousands of people going there to hike. So it's no wonder people are angry, but it is beautiful. So mm-hmm. I understand why people want to go, but also maybe we should just leave it alone, you know? Yeah. Um. So the Mexican-American War was fought in Turnbull Canyon. Not solely, but, you know, it happened there too. Um. So not only does that add so many more bodies and deaths that have happened in this canyon, but people also... Um, claim that today they can sometimes hear the sound of war drums that would have been played during the war like in the canyon like when literally there are nobody there's no people with drums that's scary Mm -hmm. i feel like that's common in areas like battlefields yeah it definitely is and we've definitely talked about it before i remember like when i did the hawaiian night marchers people also say they can hear the drums yeah and you know if you hear the drums baby you gotta go you gotta get out of there (laughs) definitely as fast as you can um yeah it's never it's never good so um up to this point in history turnbull canyon is known as hatunka um but it was actually named turnbull canyon um after a scottish immigrant named robert turnbull okay so robert uh this man bought the canyon from a quaker businessman who lived in whittier in the 1870s so, you know, he had, like, it was like a recession in the 1870s or whatever. And, but somehow this man, like, Robert had a little bit of money saved. So he was like, I'm going to buy the canyon and I want to raise some sheep. <laughs> Which I'm just, it's okay. just really funny. Like, why, f- first of all, why in the canyon? I don't know. But right, like, why are you buying a canyon? <laughs> the land was apparently cheap. So, okay, okay. I guess that's why he did it. But, um... So he did that for, you know, around 10 years. Um, but then in 1880, he actually sold the land back to the Quakers for a profit because 
it was worth more money. And honestly, he was down bad. <laughs> um, so, you know, he was down bad on money, needed the money. And after he sold the canyon back to the Quaker businessman, his luck only got worse. Um, he became known as the town drunk. Oh, no. <laughs> and yeah, shortly after selling the canyon back, he fell off of his horse one night, literally because he was just drunk and couldn't like physically stay on the horse oh my god um which is drunk driving before literally drunk driving dui and what's funny that you say that is because literally he was picked up and taken to jail Uh, for literally drunk driving his horse okay (laughs) see that's another thing though like was that actually a thing because i think can't horses just like i don't know if it's a horse it can like not crash right (laughs) i mean that's true but i think that they just took him to jail just to protect him because like he fell off his horse like he was not he was not okay okay. so i think that's actually why but i was just see i I feel like i need to look into that now it's just like was drunk driving (laughs) (laughs) was drunk driving a horse i feel like it is though because you can drunk drive a bicycle and i know that's not the same thing but yeah well I feel like he can drunk drive anything. Because, like, a horse, I mean, it's still, like, taking direction from you. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, you know, mm. horse DUIs. Yeah. Well, maybe. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he he did, in fact, spend the night in jail for um, a horse DUI. Um, and But they, like, let him go immediately the next morning once he had sobered up. So it really was just because he was drunk. Um, mm-hmm. So when he got back home, he noticed that he was like very bruised and beaten and obviously this is because he fell off his horse multiple times also i did not know i don't know if i mentioned that he fell off multiple times um and so that's why he was bruised and hurt but okay. oh, can i can i yeah um pause for a second because i i did look up if it's oh, good. illegal now give it to us um i you know i don't know about back in the day but apparently um, riding a horse while drunk is not against the law in most oh. states. However, in Kentucky, Florida, and California, oh. you can get into serious trouble. All right. Well, we are in California, so. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we have it, folks. Horse DUIs are, in fact, a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, check At least your here. state. <laughs> check your state. <laughs> that is so funny. No, that's so funny. Um, yeah, so, makes sense why he was in jail, I guess. Um, so... Anyways, so, yeah, he's at home, and he's like, wow, I'm really bruised and beaten. What happened? Um, He was so blacked out that he literally didn't remember that he fell off the horse. Didn't even what? really remember that he was in jail for the night. Okay, well, did he get a concussion, too? Um, Is my question. Well, so this was, like, <laughs> the 1800s, old- so, like, I don't even know if we knew the word concussion. So That's true. the doctors true. definitely didn't test him. He didn't go to a doctor. Um, But my answer for you is yes, he definitely had a concussion. <laughs> Um, because, um, sadly the bruises led to a brain aneurysm and (gasps) tragically he had his aneurysm while he was walking on a bridge and he ended up over the bridge and died. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. That is horrifying. Um, yeah, it's really horrifying, but what is even worse, honestly? So maybe like this man was just walking on the bridge and had an aneurysm and fell off the side but like that's a little coincidental don't you think like i mean that's a lot of bad things happening at once an aneurysm you're falling off and i don't know it's just a little weird um and yeah i mean like it could happen i suppose however when the police found his body you know eventually after it had like washed up um and they didn't know what happened at all so they you know did like a little autopsy and the medical examiner um, actually said that his cause of death was homicide. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, and that people were, like, trying to take him out. Um, yeah, and so there's actually no other, like, information we can find on this, but the police ruled his death a homicide. So he was murdered. Um, hmm. So people believe okay. that he probably, he did, he definitely did have an aneurysm, but um, not even that he was murdered, but just, like, Somebody saw him struggling on this bridge and just was like, let's just throw him over. Um, which, I mean, is okay, still kind okay. of murder. Like, you could have helped him instead. You yeah, know, he did. Definitely. Like, but, yeah, nobody was ever caught. And we still, to this day, don't know who did that. But his death was marked a homicide. So, 
you know, that's bad. It's bad. But the Quakers who actually bought the land, like, well, sold him the land and then bought it back. Um, they took pity on him and his story and decided that since he was always like such a nice man to them, even if he was a drunk, they were going to name the canyon um, after him. So that's why it's named Turnbull Canyon, which is kind of sad. But like, that's already just another dark thing that's happened. Like this mm-hmm. man murdered, I guess. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, hmm. that's why it's named Turnbull Canyon. Um, so now I'm going to skip ahead a lot of years. So that was like 1850s. I think, or maybe 60s. Um, no, I lied. Okay. 1880s. <laughs> I was getting okay. there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, we're going to fast forward to 1930, which is like 50 years. But, you know, crazy things have happened. I just no. So every year something crazy has happened in Turnbull Canyon. But, like, I would be here all night long if I was to tell you every single thing that happened there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we can do a part two on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so... Let's see here. The owners of the canyon in 1930, which it wasn't the same people, but I, as like, the, it wasn't the Quaker people, but like, I don't know who owned it at this point. But in 1930, whoever did own it thought it would be like the perfect location to build an insane asylum um, in the canyon. So okay. I'm assuming um, so that people couldn't like escape, like if they did uh, escape, you know. Okay. Um, and we all know. <laughs> Um, the history behind, you know, insane asylums, like in the 19, early 1900s and how that went. So, you know, bad, very, very bad, um, mistreatment, you know, all the typical things that you've heard us talk about many times on here. And, um, so it, that opened in 1930 and in the early 1940s, the asylum actually burned down and killed almost all of the people who were in it, including the workers. Uh why do they all burn down? That's, I honestly feel like people are burning them down. I mean, I guess it is a mental yeah. disorder to be <laughs> obsessed with fire. Yeah. So maybe there's that, but. <laughs> yeah. But there's like that's. That. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like all mental asylums, like I hear, oh, it got burned down. It's like, what? That's not. It's, why is yeah. it so common? Why is it so common? That's a great question. And I don't know. Or was it people, like, setting it on fire so they didn't have to worry about these people? Because that's also a possibility. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Because, you know, people don't like mentally disabled people, like, in any capacity, in any time of history. So, you know, who knows? But it killed a lot of people when that happened. So even more people to haunt the canyon. Um, allegedly, there were also tunnels under this asylum that they had built. Because there always are tunnels, of course. And apparently still in the tunnels, which remain there today, there are tons of remains and bones still left down there. And people have, like, gone and seen the bones. And they're like, yeah. Like, if you go, you'll probably see bones. So that's, you know, that's bad. That's that's not not good. (laughs) And the legend also says that these tunnels under the canyon lead to the gates of hell. So, there's that as well. Okay, (laughs) okay. You know, no no proof on that. Just, that's what they say. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, you know, take that into consideration as well. We are moving forward just a little bit more in history to April 18th, 1952. um, When Flight 416 was on its way to Los Angeles, California. And it was flying near Turnbull Canyon when ground control lost all contact with the plane and the planes actually, this is so creepy. The last message that the plane sent was at three thirty three AM. <gasps> so that's spooked my gooks mm-hmm. to the extreme. Um, so the pilot of the plane was a very trained pilot. Um, somebody who's like very trustworthy in the sky, like flown thousands of hours, like very trustworthy. Um, so it seemed a little odd that when something, you know, went wrong, that this would happen to him because he was very, very trained. Um, but on this night, one really big issue was that the, it was very foggy. Like, the canyon, the whole area, it was extremely foggy. And it is said that the pilot was actually flying 10 feet below the recommended flight level. But that was literally because he couldn't see. Like, he thought he was flying the recommended flight level. But because he couldn't see the ground. So he was actually flying a little too low. Okay. Hmm. 
I guess that's before all the technology. Like, I don't... I guess. Like, like why... (laughs) How did he not know? (laughs) Listen, I actually know zero things about flying a plane. So, I have literally no idea. Yeah, like, what what year did you say it was? It is 1952. Okay. Yeah, I don't... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But regardless, he didn't know (laughs) either. That's crazy. I know. And all of a sudden... Um, one of the plane's wings scraped up against the side of the canyon, which ended up spinning the plane out of control and killing all 29 people on board. So this pilot was literally flying this plane inside of this canyon without realizing it, which is crazy. That is crazy. And it's also weird because like you, I mean, he was trained very much so trained. So the fact that he didn't realize is like a little weird. So people like suspect like maybe... I don't know, some powers and spirits of the canyon were, like, forcing this plane down. There's also mm-hmm. that theory. Or, like, maybe this man was just tired on the flight, you know. Maybe he just really couldn't see. There's so many explanations. But. That seems so low, though, right? To be in a canyon, like, you're supposed to be way above. Right. But, like, I'm thinking, like, if he was just looking at the ground. It's also nighttime, so it's, like, dark. Hmm. Like, maybe he thought he... I mean, he did have more room below him because it's a canyon, yeah. But he didn't have room beside him. But that's because he just couldn't see. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me. But does really anything of the story? No. Um, so let's see here. Okay. Apparitions of the passengers and the crew of Flight 416 have been seen in the canyon ever since this day. And people describe these ghosts. Like, literally, they think it's people. And they'll come up to them, like, very confused and just very lost which is really sad, and then they'll just disappear. So that's crazy. I would not want to see that at all because that's just really sad. Yeah. And people also describe feeling like a sense of helplessness and fear when they get close to the cra- crash site, um, which, you know, obviously. Um, but this is the craziest thing. So on the annual anniversary of the plane crash, so every year on April 18th, um, Some people say that you can hear the phantom sounds of a plane crash. And, like, I don't know what a plane crash sounds like. And so people describe it as, like, a bomb going off really close to you, but only louder. Um, That's not, that's not a good thing. No. You hear, like, people screaming in a plane, too? Um, I don't know. People don't really say they can hear screaming, but just, like, the plane itself. So, like, yeah. that's crazy. So, like, are we talking about a ghost plane at this point? I like, guess so. Like, listen, Jeez. we've had we've had ghost ships, ghost people, ghost dogs. Never heard of a ghost plane until now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you want to hear a ghost plane, maybe just go on April 18th. So, um, I don't know. I have the heebie-jeebies even thinking about that. Um, so, um, we're not done. <laughs> Clearly, we're not done. But... Um, in my opinion, I just want to say, at this point, I already believe that this land is cursed. Because why is so many bad things happening there? Like, it no, literally no. has to like be. That, I mean, even... Yeah. Like, oh, crazy. Even if it's not cursed, like, all these things happening are cursing it. 100... Yeah, exactly. So. 100%. Like, it is. So, yeah. Um, That's pretty much, like all like the major events that happened before the 2000s so now we're gonna get to like more recent events um in the canyon and yes things are still going on there today so you know this will definitely be a continuous story i suppose um on october 12th in 2002 the body of 17 year old gloria gaxiola was found in the canyon (laughs) And oh, no. yeah, so she had been shot in the head and killed and for five years and literally just dumped in the canyon. But people say like the uh, investigator said like she was definitely killed there, too. Um, and for five years, no arrests were made until a random witness came forward saying that it was actually three of Gloria's friends who had plotted to kill her. Oh, my God. Yeah. And this like witness, they, they were like anonymous so we don't know who they are but it was obviously somebody close to the situation because like a week later the three boys were literally arrested and sentenced to life in prison 
So, like, they definitely did it. But there's no explanation as to why. Like, what is going on? Don't know. Don't know. Just that's, Oh, my God. Awful. That's just horrible. Like, she was only 17. And I'm assuming, like, they were, too. Yeah, I mean, if you said that they were her friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, not good at all. Um, and so then, in on August 4th, 2009, um, Christine Martinez was stabbed and slashed with needles and knives by two men before they left her to die in the canyon. Um, and this is, like, really dark. <laughs> so they thought they, you know, got the job done and killed her. But as they were walking away, they heard her scream out for help. So they went back and stabbed her even more. <gasps> um, so, so then, you know, they stabbed her even more and then they leave. Um, but she was still alive even after they came back. And after they left the second time, she was like, I have to keep as quiet as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And still as she possibly could until they left. So she, like, listened to their footsteps, right? And as soon as they left, as as soon as she felt like it was, like, maybe safe to move, she was able to use her shirt to tie around her wounds so that she wouldn't bleed out. Now, I did not get into the grisly details because this specific case is extremely, extremely bad. Like, oh, just my know God. it's bad. It's really bad. But this girl literally, literally, somehow got up, tied her wounds closed so that she wouldn't bleed out, made it to a, like, neighboring house. Like, I guess the closest house to this canyon. And it belonged to this, like, old lady. And she was able to call the police and survive. Like, go off, Christine. That is insane. Like, that's... She's yeah. a badass. She right. Really did that. Literally, literally. And then she was able to obviously, you know, say who it was because she knew like what the men looked like and she knew who they were. So Yeah. They were, oh you God. know, caught and captured and sentenced to life in prison as well. So I mean, honestly, Christine, go off because she really did that. An yeah. absolute survivor. <laughs> but still horrible. Like awful. Awful. Um <laughs> and so the most recent thing I could find was from the March of 2011, where the remains of another partially decomposed woman were found in the canyon, but she has yet to be identified um, to this day. Now, since 2011, there have been countless remains um, found, like countless, but they're all like pretty much all bone. So like investigators have no idea. Like, who they could be, what they could be. Like, this seems to be, at this point, like, a dumping ground for bodies. And oh, it's, it, what the? It's really Seriously? not. Seriously? Yeah. It's, and, like, maybe, like, is it a good murder spot? Like, obviously it's not. Like, and I think people think that it is because it's really dark, you know? But, like, thousands of people go here. So, like, this is not a good spot, guys. Like, let's not murder people. But if you do, like, don't, don't do it there, guys. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just don't, kidding. Don't, don't do, do not. Um... So, yeah, and people say, like, when if you are hiking Turnbull Canyon, like, you are very, very much so possible to see a body or remains. Like, people go hiking all the time and have to call the police because they see, like, bones. Um, so, you know, it's really, really not good. So, yeah, let's see here. I really, really do think that this place is cursed. I... I mean, how can, how else can we explain all these bad things? Like, just because it's dark and scary? Like, I really believe that, like, the Native Americans cursed the land once it was taken from them, once they were brutally murdered. I think they cursed the land and try to protect it to this day. Honestly. Yeah, I mean... And I don't think that explains, like, every single bad thing that happens there, obviously. But, like... Something's going on, guys. Yeah, it is definitely really crazy that that many bad things have happened here. Right. And it's just, oh my God, I can't believe the fact that you're saying when people are just hiking, they see remains on the yeah. trails and stuff. Yeah, like, just... like, no, I, oh, it's just so sickening. But yeah, that is the legend of Turnbull Canyon. That's I never heard of that before. Me neither. Me neither. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Like, I would really... I can't even imagine how many people probably go to that canyon without knowing a single one of those things. 
Yeah, and they're like, oh, it's just pretty. Let's, exactly. let's go and see Because, like, it. I don't look up, like, the history of a, a place before I go hiking. Right. I know. Now I might. But. Yeah, right. <laughs> now I'm changing my mind. But, like, yeah. That's so... So then people really have to call the police if they see something because they just have no idea. I don't know. It's, that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. So, yeah. Spooky. And I don't like it. And I will not be going there. I do not. Yeah. Ha- I do not want to see that place at all. Yeah, that's a lot. Mm, I already have bad luck as it is. I can't be cursed. <laughs> I do want to see it, though. Just, like, pictures to see how pretty it oh, is. Oh, definitely. But... Definitely go check out our Instagram so you can see the pictures. Yeah. And, of course, I'm sure there will be some vampire pictures. We better post a picture of Edward Cullen. Honestly. <laughs> can we please do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, but go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And, hmm. <laughs> Everybody better go comment and wish Savannah a happy birthday because yes. it's her freaking birthday. <laughs> and, yeah, that's kind of all I have for you guys this week. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to have to do it. Just, <laughs> I think that's enough. This I think, one's been crazy. <laughs> yeah, it really has. I think I think we've given you guys enough. Um, So, yeah, well, I guess we will see you guys next week. All right. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs>